angioaminoblastic T-cell lymphoma, AITL. This is the overview of the dichotomy of lymphoma. So lymphoma can be divided into Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In the non-Hodgkin lymphoma, we have B non-Hodgkin lymphoma, T or NK cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In the T or NK cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma, we, we can categorize, differentiate into either systemic or limited to the skin. In the systemic, we have nodal the, that stay in the lymph node or outside the lymph node, extranodal or in the blood leukemic. And this is the entity that we see in the primary cutaneous CTC, so cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So we have mycosis fungoides and all the other entities. And in the nodal, we have all these entity. And today's topic is angioaminoblastic T cell lymphoma falling under the nodal component of the T and NK cell lymphoma, T cell lymphoma. And they used to call it angioaminoblastic T cell lymphoma, now uh, WHO has changed the name to nodal T follicular helper cell lymphoma, angioaminoblastic subtype. And these are the entity currently seen. And ICC also called follicular helper T cell lymphoma. So in 2017, there was an umbrella term created called nodal T cell lymphoma of T follicular helper origin. And in this umbrella term, there are three entity, so angioaminoblastic T cell lymphoma, follicular T cell lymphoma, and nodal peripheral T cell lymphoma with T follicular helper phenotype. The international consensus classification consider uh, this as one disease entity with three different subtypes. They are comprised of angioaminoblastic, follicular, and NOS. This entity by definition, exclude any primary cutaneous CD4 positive T cell lymph proliferation, which also have feature of a T follicular helper phenotype. And then the fifth edition of WHO consider it slightly different than ICC. So they consider a family of three related entity instead of a one disease with three different subtypes. So WHO consider, and this is the Comparison between 2017 WHO ICC 2022 and WHO fifth edition, and you can see that ICC considered as a one disease with three subtype. WHO considered as a, a family of three entity. As summarized over here, immunophenotype of the this angioaminoblastic um, T cell lymphoma has to have T follicular helper phenotype. Uh, by definition, they need to have at least two and ideally three T follicular helper marker. And this is the very uh, commonly used panel. So CD10, BCL6, PD1, ICOS, and CXCL13. In terms of the genetic mutation from gene expression profiling, TFH lymphoma frequently carry TET2, DNMT3A, Rho A, and IDH2, which are rarely seen in combination other than like T follicular helper cell lymphoma. And this is the cartoon to highlight the 2017 ICC 2022 and 5th edition WHO. And this is like the current categorization. So in this WHO 5th edition, we have three different entity under an one umbrella term called nodal T follicular helper cell lymphoma. And in ICC, we have uh, one disease with th three subtypes in the uh, collectively named follicular helper T cell lymphoma. One entity, three subtype, a family of three different lymphoma. So this is the histology of the T follicular health cell lymphoma and geomyoblastic subtype and follicular variant and NOS. If you see this over here, we have a polymorphous cell infiltrate with prominent vessel and expansion of the CD21 positive follicular dendritic cell. And 
this is the this T follicular helper cell. So this is the T follicular helper cell lymphoma. Follicular variant is uh, exemplified here as a case of a follicular lymphoma-like appearance. It comprised of CD3 positive T cell nodule and also positive for server of the TFH marker uh, that are not shown. And over here we have um, follicular helper T cell lymphoma, that's NOS, and that consists of the diffuse proliferation of atypical CD4 positive cell that are expressed in two or more TFH marker. Uh, one shown here is a CXCL13. This is the summary of the AITL or T nodal T follicular helper cell lymphoma and geomenoblastic subtype. Um, clinically, we have B symptom and generalized peripheral lymphadenopathy can be seen and also hepatosplenomegaly can be seen. Bone marrow involvement can be uh, commonly seen as well. Morphologically, neoplastic T cells are often in the minority and they have a bunch of other immunoreactive uh, tumor environment. And neoplastic T cells can be small to medium in size and they usually have these kind of pale to clear cytoplasm that are around the neoplastic cell. Also, one of the characteristic finding of the in, in this entity is hyperplastic high endothelial venule. And so over here we have these kind of prominent high endothelial venue here. This is uh, one of the key feature of angioaminoblastic T cell lymphoma. Phenotypically, they will have pan T cell marker, CD2, CD3, CD5, and CD4 is usually positive, and CD8 is negative. They have variable loss of CD7. Most cases express at least two T follicular helper cell markers, the CD10 and CXCL13. These two are considered the most uh, specific. And we also have an extra follicular, follicular dendritic cell proliferation, such as uh, CD21, CD23, and CD35. EBV is usually positive, and genetic mutation that is associated with this um, entity usually include TET2, DNMT3A, ROA, and IDH2. It can be broken down into three different patterns. And pattern one, it's very mild and it mimics the follicular hyperplasia, like in reactive follicular hyperplasia. And there was a partial lymph node involvement by the hyperplastic follicle as seen in the picture. And it lack, usually lack extra follicular hyperplasia of the follicular dendritic cell if you do CD21 stay. And pattern two usually have prominent perifollicular neoplastic T cell infiltrate. Uh, they will show partial effacement of the lymph node uh, architecture with some attracted, attracted follicle, as we can see here. And pattern three will have uh, total effacement of the lymph node architecture, and you will not see any of the follicular dendritic cell. So, so there, there's a difference between pattern two and pattern three. Pattern three is like more total effacement of the lymph node architecture with a lot of high, high endothelial venue, you will not be expecting to see any sort of residual attractive follicle or any sort of follicular hyperplasia pattern in pattern three. And this one is uh, pattern one. And in the, in the bigger picture, as you can see, you have a uh, large hyperplastic follicle and it doesn't have any of the extra follicular hyperplasia of the follicular dendritic cells. If you do the CD21 stain, and that's uh, pattern one of the AITL. And as I mentioned, CD21 was just only showing just a follicle, but it lacked the extra follicular hyperplasia of the FDC. So here is showing progressive accumulation of the genetic alteration in the evolution of how TFH um, lymphoma and immunoplastic subtype will evolve. So, so over here, TET2 and DNMT3A mutation will occur in the early, in the hematopoietic stem cell, and it disrupts the trans, so description program and enhancing the stem cell renewal. It leads to the clonal hematopoiesis, also called CHIP. And then 
These mutated stem cells can then differentiate into the various lineages pro progenies, resulting in the presence of the early mutation in their progeny, including the neoplastic TFH cell clone and the high proliferation of the non neoplastic T and B cell. And subsequent mutation include, uh, as shown here, Rho A, IDH2, and FAV1, and all these other mutations, uh, making this making this um, sort of like subsequent mutation, though, so they will occur and they will be committed to CD4 positive cell. Then they drive the T follicular helper cell differentiation and malignant transformation. And that will cause a clonal expansion and then making a specific to lymphoma. In addition to the malignant TFH clone, they are frequently variable minor and occasional pre predominant T and B cell clone. As, as shown here, uh, they are the minor clone. So they usually occur um, predominantly in the either B or T cell clone in the lymph node in the patient with node or T follicular helper cell lymphoma and germinoblastic subtype, which may also harbor TET2 and DNMT3A. Uh, TET2 is most common, commonly seen in germinoblastic T cell lymphoma. And this is uh, another um, proposal. So these neoplastic trans transformation of the TFA cell and the clonal expansion are largely driven by two categories of the, the gene. Uh, that include, so over here, DNA methylation regulator, such as TAT2, DNMT3A, and IDH2, and T cell receptor signaling gene such as Rho A, Val 1, and P PLCG1 mutation. So these uh, oncogenic cooperation will happen, and then the neoplastic TFA cell will then have a TAT2 mutation, and then it will then cause exacerbation of the polymorphous infiltrate. Um, either they are perturbed by these transcription transcriptional program, the TAT2 and DNM3 mutation, and it will also may be driven by partially by the EVV positive B cell, and then they will keep on driving to the clonal expansion. And then this will then dysregulate the immune response and exacerbate the tumor microenvironment and then cause follicular dendritic cell hyperplasia and high endothelial venue hyperplasia that will cause all these due to the CXTL13 and BGF. So differential diagnosis of AITL will include atypical T-zone hyperplasia. And in the atypical T-zone hyperplasia, we can see maybe due to the viral infection or autoimmune disease, and the nodal architecture is preserved. And there was no expansion of the FTC meshwork. And the cellular infiltrate is usually small to medium, like in AITL. And we'll also have a plasma cell, immunoblast, and activated T, T uh, lymphocyte. Another differential is the peripheral T cell lymphoma, not otherwise specified. So morphologically, if we can compare and contrast, PTCL and NOS will have a pleomorphic uh, morphology. The cell size will be ranging from medium to large tumor cell, and they will have a NAS of clear cell, so very similar to AITL. And we also have a some sometimes can have a re stembert like cell, so it's very similar and overlap. That's why it's a differential. And also, just like in the AITL, it will also have a polymorphic inflammatory background. In the immunophenotypically, it's it will show pan T cell antigen, and just like in the TFH, it will also have a typically show down regulation of CD5 and CD7. Often, more often CD4 positive than CD8 positive. So it's very similar and overlapping. And there would be cases where it's dual positive or dual negative in sub subset of cases. And CD8 positivity and CD56 positivity can also be seen in subset of cases. Over here, Morphological spectrum of the peripheral T cell lymphoma NOS is very broad with um, highly variable tumor cells that are cytologic characteristic 
an inflammatory background shown here. And you can also see the tumor cells, they are large and anaplastic morphology. And you can also show pleomorphism. Over here is not so pleomorphic, here is more like monomorphic, medium size, monocytoid morphology. Another differential is classic Hodgkin lymphoma. Classic Hodgkin lymphoma can mimic AITL. It can also have restemper cells just like in AITL, but these restemper cells are going to be stereotypical of the classic Hodgkin lymphoma. You can also see other Hodgkin cells in the background in the tumor microenvironment, including small lymphocyte, eosinophil, and histiocyte. Immunophenotypically, CD30 is expected to be positive in about 95% of the cases. CD15 is positive in 70 to 80% of the cases. CD45 is supposed to be negative. PEX5 is classically dim positive. MUM1 is usually positive. EVV can be positive in 20% of the cases. And also CD20 can be variably positive in 20% of the cases. And classic Hodgkin lymphoma. And this is uh, compare and contrast in classic Hodgkin lymphoma with AITF. So in classic Hodgkin lymphoma, we can see lacuna cell, and they will look just like this with a bunch of very clear cytoplasm. And mononuclear Hodgkin cell looks just like um, cherry red nuclei, nucleoli, and it will be just mononuclear. And we can also see classic uh, restemper cell. So they are multinucleated. And we can also see mummified Hodgkin cell. Differently, we have in AITL, we have these follicles that are showing the kind of attractive follicle. And we can also see uh, these polymorphous infiltrate here with the, all the neoplastic cell infiltrating with the high endothelial venue. So HEV will be hyperplastic. And also these neoplastic cell can also show monomorphic um, lymphoid cell pattern, but it will be uh, different than Hodgkin lymphoma. Although we can see numerous restemper cell in, in some cases. And this is the partial involvement of the AITL showing the just kind of like follicular hyperplasia pattern. Immunophenotypically, classic Hodgkin lymphoma will show CD30 positivity. PAX5 in the large cell, they're classically dim here. Uh, these cells are just the background B lymph, small lymphocyte. And CD20 is negative usually, majority of the time. Uh, so these large cells, CD20 negative, and CD15 is positive with the perinuclear dot. It's AITL. I will have all the TFH marker like PD1 or ICOS or CD10. The, these are the T cell TFH marker, and also it will show highlight the um, follicular dendritic cell meshwork by CD21 